Hello everyone, welcome to GoVM Lab. In this lecture, we will walk you through a step-by-step -step procedure of installing ESXi 8.0 in a VM. So with that, let's get started. Now before we walk you through the step-by-step -step procedure of installing ESXi 8.0 in a VM, let's log into our base ESXi host where we are going to deploy ESXi as a VM. So our base ESXi host having a FQDN as saesxi-01.lab.local. So that is going to be our base ESXi host. Let's log into our base ESXi host with the username as root and let's provide the password to our ESXi host. And now as you could see that we are successfully logged in to our host client of our base ESXi host. And this is the name of our ESXi host. And this ESXi host is actually running ESXi version 8.0 U1. Now, what we are going to demonstrate you, we are going to demonstrate you installation procedure of ESXi 8.0. Before we walk you through the steps, just wanted to make it clear that the installation steps remain same whether you install ESXi 8.0 in a VM or you do it on a bare metal hardware. Because it's a lab environment, that is the reason we are doing it installation in a VM. So now let's get started. Let's click on create VM create a new virtual machine, click on next. Let's give a name of that VM is sa-esxi-03.lab.local. Compatibility is going to be 8.0 virtual machine. Select the OS family as other, scroll down and let's select the version as esxi 8.0 and later. So we are going to install esxi 8.0. That's the reason we are using a version 8.0 or later. Now here we have a bunch of data store listed here so we can actually select any of the data store. So for this demonstration, I'm going to use our data store named as data store one to host the files of our ESXi VM. Click on next. Now the next wizard where you can actually go and uh, define the hardware configuration for your ESXi virtual machine. If it's a bare metal hardware, then obviously we do not need to provide all of these configurations because that bare metal hardware would be having all of the resources available in the hardware itself. But because it's a lab environment, we are demonstrating you ESXi installation in a VM. That's the reason we are going to select the CPU uh, socket as let's say. So we are going to select CPU count as four. Let's provide the memory as 16 GB. Now, because we have a, a little bit data store constraint, that's the reason for the demonstration purpose. We are actually going to provide disk space for our ESXi installation is 60 GB for now. But usually you should be having disk space more than 150 GB if you are installing ESXi 8.0. Because 128 GB, it, it actually majorly used for your OS data and the other stuff. So if you want to have a data store hosting your virtual machine, then you need to provide a larger a disk space but it's a lab environment and that's the reason we are just having a 60 GB as a disk space. Now I scroll down. Here you have to provide the network connectivity. So we are actually going to provide VM network as a management network for this ESXi host. Now the next, what do we have? It is the CD DVD drive. So you will have to provide or you will have to attach your CD DVD drive or ISO file to your host device. So that's why we are actually going to go and select data store ISO file because ISO file currently present in my ESXi host data store and that is the the file name as you could see that it's VMWiser installer 8.0 u1 so we are actually going to install 8.0 u1 and that is the build number click on select so now as you could see that we have attached ISO of 8.0 u1 to our ESXi host and one thing you have to make sure that this option always have to check mark connect at power on so as when you power on your ESXi host, it should not happen that your ESXi host is not able to find the installer. So that's the reason you have to make sure that this option is checkmarked. So the next time when it boots up, it actually booted from that installer, which is present in that CD drive. Now click on VM options, click on boot options. And here we have an option called the next time virtual machine boots up, we want force entry into the BIOS setup screen. So this is the option we should be checking it out so that next time it boots up, it automatically takes us into the BIOS setup screen. So click on next and, and now here we can actually go and review all of our ESXi configuration, the name of our ESXi server that is a data store going to hold all of the ESXi files. That is the ESXi version what we are going to have it. These are the 
hardware configuration of our ESXi host as you could see that that is the capacity of our ESXi host 60 GB and the disk type is thick provision lazy zero. So that's what pretty much it's all about it. Now click on finish. And as you could see that our ESXi VM has been created successfully. Now let's go and power on this VM. And now as you could see that this VM has been powered on successfully. And because we wanted this VM to boot in the BIOS screen. So that's what we are going to do it. And now as you could see that this VM is actually booting it up into its BIOS screen. Let's boot it through CD-ROM. And now as you could see that your ESXi host is booting up with that CD DVD ROM installer file. The image what we have attached during the VM creation. So now it will actually going to unzip your ESXi kernel and then it will be uncompressing all of the boot modules which is really required for this ESXi 8.0 installation. So as you could see that it is actually uncompressing it is actually uncompressing all of those boot modules. Now at this stage as you could see that it's actually loading all of the kernel modules whatever is required for your ESXi installation. So that's where it, it will start loading those kernel modules and now it's starting couple of services as you could see that as a part of this installation because some of the key services which are very important for this ESXi 8.0 kernel and as you could see that these services are being started. So now it, it will take a, a few minutes before it shows up that installer screen. So let's wait for a few minutes and we'll proceed with the installation steps where the installer will be asking us some of the, the inputs for this ESXi 8.0 installation. As you could see that after installing all of the kernel modules starting all of the required services now the installer is showing us the screen where it says that welcome to VMware ESXi 8.01 installation. Now let's press the enter key to proceed with the installation in this steps it actually asks for license agreement. So let's go and press F11 key accept the license agreement. Now it's scanning all of the available devices. So now as you could see that this is the the disk what we have attached to your ESXi VM. So now that disk space is 60 GB and it's showing the device type as local which means that this disk is local to that ESXi host. Now there's a one more option what do you have it is the remote which means that if you want to boot this ESXi host not from its local data store but from some centralized storage or maybe you want to install this ESXi kernel on some LUN which is sitting on some of your centralized storage array and that's where you can actually go and select LUN as a remote device for installing your ESXi kernel. Now because we are installing ESXi host on a local data store that's the reason we'll continue with the installation on the local device which is like a 60 GB of drive. Now here's the keyboard layout is US and now this is the very important password you have to remember it. You have to make sure that you make a note of this particular root user password. So let's provide the password of our ESXi root user. Press enter key and now here is some warning message. It says that it tells us that hardware virtualization is not the feature of the CPU or it is not enabled in the BIOS. So usually whenever you want to install ESXi host on a bare metal server, most of the time all of the latest generation processor will be having a uh, hardware virtualization enabled. They will be having Intel VT or AMD V bits to be enabled. But because we are installing this ESXi in a VM for the lab purpose and that's the reason it's not actual CPU hardware what we are having it and that's the reason it's showing us that warning that hardware virtualization is not enabled in the BIOS. So if you want to install it, please enable that particular flag. But as of now, because we are doing it ESXi installation in a VM, we can easily ignore this particular flag as of now for the installation purpose. So let's press enter key to continue and this is our final screen which says that confirm your installation. So now your installer is going to configure ESXi 8.0 on this particular drive and that is going to be our 60 GB virtual disk what we have defined it during the installation procedure. Even if there are existing partition the disk will be repartitioned. So now do you want to continue with the installation? Of course we want to continue with the installation. So let's go and press F11 key and now as you could see that the installation has triggered and the installation is in progress now. Now it will take a few minutes to get this installation done. Let's just wait for a few minutes and get this installation completed. So now as you could see that our ESXi installation is completed and it tells us very clearly that ESXi 8.0.1 has been installed successfully. Now remove the installation media 
before rebooting so now before we go and proceed with the reboot what we have to do let's go and remove the media from that esxi host so that next time it doesn't boot it from there so click on edit settings let's go to our data store iso file where we have attached that iso let's click on this option let's disconnect it now we have disconnected our media from that esxi host now let's press the enter key and let's reboot the system as you could see that now our esxi host is loading again and this time it's not booting it from that installer it is actually booting from the bootloader which is stored on its data store one or its local drive so now as you could see that our esxi installation is successfully done and we could see that now our esxi host is actually booting from its local drive so now again let's wait for a few minutes because again it will be decompressing the kernel it will be installing all of the kernel modules it will be taking some time to starting all of the required services and then our esxi will be booted up successfully so now as you could see that our esxi installation is done so we have successfully demonstrated you installation of our esxi 8.0 u1 version and this is the version as you could rightly see it here that is your esxi 8.0 u1 version that is the build what we have installed it on our ESXi host. These are the hardware configuration. As you could see that 16 GB of memory, what we have assigned to our ESXi host. And as of now, it is showing you the hardware vendor as VMware because we have created ESXi as a VM. We installed ESXi 8.0 in a VM. That is the reason it's showing vendor as a VMware. But if you're installing this ESXi on a bare metal hardware, whether it's a Dell server, IBM server, Lenovo server, you will be seeing the vendor specific information here. Now below, if you really see that, this is the information about the IP configuration or network configuration. So this is the IP address, what it has been assigned to this ESXi host. And that is the IP as a DSCP IP, as you could see that. So this is the dynamic IP, what has been assigned to your ESXi host. So let's go and do one thing. Let's use this IP and let's try to access this ESXi host using one of the amazing host client interface what VMware has provided us to manage the ESXi host configuration at the host level. So let's open up the browser. Let's provide this IP address. So the IP address was 172.16.10.103. And now this is the host client. So this is one of the amazing interface what VMware has provided us to manage our ESXi host individually. And this is our ESXi host client. Let's provide the username as root. And if you remember during the installation, we have asked you please make a note of that root password because that root password is really important to get access to your ESXi host. So now here we have to provide the same password what we have provided during ESXi installation. And now as you could see that after providing successful username and password, you will see that it will logs us into the user interface or graphical user interface, what we call it as a host client. So this is our ESXi host. Uh, currently named as localhost.lab.local. It's running the version 8.0 u1. As of now, this ESXi host is not being managed by any vCenter server, which means it's a standalone ESXi host. Not is being it is not being managed by any vCenter server. As of now, it does not have any license. That's the reason it's showing us saying that the license will expire in 60 days because it's an evaluation license what we are having it. And the last but not the least is no data stores have been configured on the host. Now, this is something which we have already explained to you that because we were having a, a, a resource constraint, we were having a disk capacity issues because of which we could not provide this ESXi host around like more than 150 GB of hard drive space. And that is the reason it could not create VMFS data store for hosting our virtual machines. So now because it's a lab environment, we had a very enough space to create an ESXi in a VM. That is the reason VMFS data store has not been created on this ESXi host. But whenever you do the ESXi installation on a bare metal hardware, you will be having a TB of um, a disk space and you will not be having the constraint what we are having it at this moment. So this is expected here because we have not uh, provided the enough disk space for the ESXi installation. And that's the reason you click on the storage and you will see that there is no data store present. So that is expected behavior because of the resource constraint. But as I said, the purpose here is that explain you the step by step procedure of ESXi 8.2. And as we have mentioned many times, you use the same steps to do the ESXi installation on the bare metal hardware as well. And in, because in the bare metal hardware, we would be having a bunch of uh, good configuration. So we will not be hitting the data store issues. What do we see it here? So now this conclude our discussion on how do we install ESXi 8.0 in 
in a VM. So we are walking through step-by-step -step procedure of installing ESXi 8.2 in a VM. And as we are keep retreating again and again, the installation procedure remains same, whether it's a ESXi installation in a VM or ESXi installation on a bare metal hardware. If you have interest in learning VMware more in depth, not from an administration perspective, but from the architect or consulting perspective, then join our VMware vSphere 0 to Hero Data Center Expert Program. This particular program has been highly rated by all of our learners. 100 plus careers have been transitioned successfully with our 0 to Hero Data Center Expert Deep Dive Program with the 100% placement record. Now, what are the key highlights of this program? As you could see that it's India's first job ready VMware learning program, which has a 70 hours of intense learning with the 80 plus hands on labs. 40 plus scenarios would be presented to a learner as a challenge questions to assess their learning. We do have a mentors having a 15 years of experience and the certified professionals. You would be getting opportunity to have a one on one in person doubt clarification session with the VMware mentor and this particular zero to hero program will also preparing learners for L3 or senior level profiles. Now we have transitioned many careers with our deep dive program and you can see some of the feedbacks right here on your screen. These are the feedbacks what we have received from all of our successful learners who has transitioned their career with us. So what are you waiting for? If you want to become VMware expert or want to master this technology, then call us now today on the given number or maybe drop us email on the provided email address. Thank you.